SCP-3922 is a cylindrical object, 3 cm in diameter and half a cm in height and composed of a nickel aluminum alloy. On one side, the object has been engraved with an insignia of three crescent moons in a row. On the other, the word, reassurance, has been engraved. It was purchased at a garage sale in Kenosha, Wisconsin, by an off-duty foundation field agent in 2017. It had been described by the owner as, some kind of morality filter for TV. After confirming the anomalous properties of the object, the agent turned the object over to the Foundation for Containment and Research. When placed within one meter of a television set or a computer, SCP-3922 will significantly alter the content of any fictional films, TV shows, online videos, or commercials, usually through the addition of actors in padded combat uniforms and gas masks. These additional elements, classified as SCP-3922-A, will impede and or punish any and all perceived crimes committed by the cast. The severity of this punishment is always reflective of the age rating of the video. Instances are capable of appearing in live action and animated works, often taking on the particular animation style of the latter. However, regardless of the time period portrayed in the video, the soldiers are always in possession of high-powered energy-based weaponry, vehicles capable of interstellar flight, combat drones, and other futuristic elements, all of which bear the same triple moon insignia. At the end of every video affected by 3922, an altered end title card will play in the place of any end credits, including the triple moon symbol, as well as the words, you are watched, you are protected, you are loved. Breaking Bad, Season 2 Episode 9, 4 Days Out after Jesse Pinkman calls Skinny Pete a second time and learns that the latter is unable to find where he and Walt are stranded in the desert. Two helicopters with the three moons insignia on them approach Jesse, Walt, and the RV from a distance. After touching down, four soldiers emerge from a helicopter, two of which immediately arrest Jesse and Walt for manufacturing a controlled substance. The other two inspect the meth lab inside the RV and confiscate the recently created product. After being treated for dehydration, Jesse and Walt are transported to the Albuquerque Metropolitan Detention Center as a soldier calls a disbelieving Hank Schrader and informs him that his brother-in-law is Heisenberg. The remainder of the episode depicts the consequences of Walt's public exposure. Hank angrily interrogates an arrogant and defiant Walt, resulting in the two nearly coming to blows. Starting at the halfway point of the episode, a separate subplot chronicles Saul Goodman's law firm being shut down for his illegal activities, though Saul himself manages to evade capture by 3922 or the police and vanishes from Albuquerque. The closing shot of the episode depicts Walt coldly staring at a conflicted Hank through his prison cell doors after delivering a monologue in which he revealed his role in the death of Tuco Salamanca. Gus Fring, Mike Hermantraut, and other law-breaking characters introduced earlier in the series are absent from the episode and apparently remain undetected by SCP-3922-A. Better Call Saul, Season 1 Episode 2, Miho As Jimmy McGill and Tuco Salamanca are deciding on the skateboarding twins' punishment for insulting Tuco's grandmother, a helicopter similar to the one seen in the previous Breaking Bad test approaches the scene. Tuco is executed via a long-range sniper rifle shot to the head, no does and Gonzo are killed and Nacho is seriously injured as they return fire. After the helicopter touches down, a soldier begins treating Nacho for his gunshot wounds while other instances interrogate Jimmy and the skateboarders. Although initially planning to arrest all three of them for financially motivated scams, Jimmy successfully persuades the soldiers to not take any action arguing that he saved the twins from a worse punishment from Tuco and that they will be scared of the soldiers for the rest of their lives. Additionally, he claims his attempted scam of the Kettleman's was, my homage to Robin Hood, and that he planned to donate their embezzled money to a local charity after stealing it. The soldiers let all three of them off with a stern warning to refrain from any future criminal activities, even with altruistic motivations, and exit the scene after loading Nacho into the helicopter via stretcher. No instances of SCP-3922-A demonstrated recollection of the previous Breaking Bad test. Additionally, this marks the first known occurrence of 3922-A retracting on their planned punishment after persuasion from a character. Death Note, Episode 1, Rebirth Ryuk drops the Death Note in the human world, and Light Yagami picks it up. As Light picks up the Death Note, an SCP-3922 instance appears in front of him, 
introducing himself as a member of the Three Moons Initiative. He explains to Light the dangers of the Death Note and how its use can lead to catastrophic consequences. The Soldier Instance offers Light the option to surrender the Death Note to them, assuring him that it will be safely contained and that the Initiative can assist him in finding other ways to make the world a better place. After some hesitation, Light agrees and hands over the Death Note. The Soldier thanks him and leaves, taking the Death Note with him. The rest of the episode shows Light continuing his daily life, pondering the Soldier's words and the power he almost wielded. The episode ends with Light staring at the sky, deep in thought. Dr. Naismith was uncomfortable with this test, saying, You do realize that we just gave the three moons a death note, right? I know that the death note can only kill humans, and they can do that easily. But the possibility of them doing a murder spree with the death note should not be ignored. A recorded playthrough of Five Nights at Freddy's. At the beginning of the playthrough, SCP-3922 instances barge through the front door of the pizzeria and escort the night guard out, telling him that the pizzeria has closed due to health and safety concerns. A man wearing a purple outfit is seen being arrested for the murder of several children by other 3922 instances. This man is assumed to be William Afton, also known as the purple guy from later entries. The Lion King The film proceeds as normal, except for the end credits, which includes a note after the special thanks section, this narrative has been fully inspected by the Three Moons Initiative, and we are happy to report that no illegal hunting of African wildlife has been detected. It is currently believed that fictional societies that have no interactions with humanity are outside of SCP-3922 jurisdiction. Child's Play During the opening scene when serial killer Charles Lee Ray escapes from the police, as Ray turns the corner to get into a car, a missile is fired off screen, destroying the vehicle. Then multiple instances of SCP-3922 appear and chase after him. Despite his surrender, the instances begin to fire multiple shots, eliminating Charles Lee Ray. However, the instances continue to fire for an additional couple hours, causing significant damage to the surrounding area. The movie ends with a fade to black with the typical of Three Moons insignia. Site 19 Cafeteria Security Footage Of note is that at p.m. A member of Foundation janitorial staff, was recorded smoking in direct violation of Foundation health and safety standards. It has since been reprimanded for this action. There were no changes from the original footage. SCP-3922 appears to have no effect on non-fictional recordings. A recording of Toy Story 2, recording was taken in a movie theater. At the beginning of the film, a soldier steps in front of the person holding the camera, reminds him that recording in a movie theater is illegal, confiscates it, and turns off the camera. SCP-3922 seemed to consider the recording of Toy Story 2 as the narrative, rather than the plot of the movie being recorded. Berserk, Episode 23, Eve of the Feast during the eclipse, just before the scene where Griffith activates the Crimson Behalit charm to summon the God Hand, several 3922A dropships descend on the scene. A sniper shoots the Behalit with a magnetic charge. The Behalit forms a face that proudly sings the opening lines of Homo Sapiens Invictus, Anthem of the Three Moons Initiative, causing Griffith to disappear. 3922A troops forcibly escort the remaining members of the Band of the Hawk to safety. The leader of the detachment, identifying herself as General Spiegel, offers a statement to the bewildered survivors. Provisional aid will be supplied for the time being, however, more time will be needed to prepare for wider-scale corrective action in Midland and the surrounding jurisdictions, on the grounds that, pardon my language? I have no fucking idea where to start with this hellhole. The DVD of the episode also included a special deleted scene section, along with a new scene labeled, Dinner with the Kids consisting of a six-hour cut of Griffith being mauled by several unidentified arachnoid entities. A Christmas Carol, 1951 During the course of the film, instances of SCP-3922-A are seen in the background, hidden from the characters, including the omnipresent ghosts of past, present, and future. Before the end credits, as Scrooge sits at his desk, a soldier approaches him, holding a letter. 
After a cry of alarm from Scrooge, he reluctantly accepts it. The soldier then leaves the room. After Scrooge opens the letter, the camera cuts to its contents, which detail that while Scrooge's actions were legal, the morality of said actions prompted them to observe and eventually capture him. However, due to recent events coming to light, the arrest was called off, in favor of letting you redeem yourself, you've suffered enough as it is. The film ends with the camera zooming in on the signature at the bottom of the letter. Morals appear to play a factor in determining if instances of SCP-3922A will carry out the arrest and punishment for an individual's crimes, even if they are considered legal. SCP-3922 is to be contained in a standard containment locker at Site-59. Requests for usage and research may be forwarded to Director Naismith. The End you are watched, you are protected, you are loved.